Hi there, welcome to QA Box Let's Test. And this video, we are going to learn how to do accessibility testing with Cypress. So, first of all, what is accessibility testing? Accessibility testing is the practice of making web and mobile apps usable to as many people as possible. It makes app accessible to those with disabilities, such as hearing disabilities, vision impairment, and other physical or cognitive conditions. It is also a subset of usability testing. So if you are new to accessibility testing, I'll introduce you to a tool through which you can give a kickstart to your accessibility testing. And the name of the tool is X. So all you have to do is open this website, dq.com forward slash X forward slash. Now they, they offer you a Chrome extension. So you just have to install that extension to your Chrome browser. Once that is done, open any website, open your developer's toolbar, and in here you will find one option which is X. Now the website is open. X is in here. It makes use of X code, right? And now you click on this and it is going to test your website against certain standards. Okay. So in here on this website, we find 36 vulnerabilities and this is the severity of all these issues. Let us click on the critical one and let us select the first one. Then you can uh, highlight this particular thing. All right. So this is the element which is vulnerable to uh, this particular so this is the rule images must have alternate text so there is no alternative text available for this particular image okay we can see more information now about this particular type of error you can click on this more information and it is going to tell you what the problem is and how you can go about fixing that all right great so now uh, in part 7 of this video series, we created this particular web page. Right. So let us click on the scan all pages and on this page we have got 17 vulnerabilities and 5 are critical. So let us click on the uh, critical one. So it says form element must have a label and I can now do it like this. So uh, all these uh, 5 checkboxes, they do not have uh, the label currently. With the help of inspect, you can uh, see the element in here. All right. And again, with the more information, it is going to tell you how you can fix this particular problem. All right. Great. Now, how can I automate this thing into uh, my Cypress automation solution? So to the, do that, what you have to do is you have to go to the plugins. Okay. And in here, you would find this Cypress X. Right. So I've opened that in GitHub and they are telling us certain steps which we have to follow. All right, so now let me open my uh, Visual Studio code and I've created this file cypress x config uh, step uh, txt. I've already exported that to the GitHub uh, project we have been working on this far in this video series. So step number one is we have to install dependencies. So we have to install two dependencies cypress x and xcode. Okay, and in step two, we have to update cypress support index file with this import. We have to import this thing, all right. Next thing is we have to use this method, this particular command. So this command will inject the Xcore runtime into the page under test, just like we did that manually, right? We saw that Xcore was there. And you must run this after a call to cy.wizard and before you run the check li command. So let us copy this command. I have created a spec file. It's very simple. We are just visiting the page. Now this is the best place to have these two commands, right? In the before hook. So you say cy.wizard and then uh, this particular thing, right? And now the next thing that we have to do is we have to use this command. So this will run x against the document at the point in which it is called. This means you can call this after interacting with your page and uncover accessibility issues introduced as a result of rendering in response to uh, user actions, right? And uh, this particular command uh, can accept three arguments. All are optional right so first argument is for selector so default is document you can also specify a specific selector or you can also exclude a specific select selector the argument two changes the default rule if you want to change the default rules present into uh, xcode then we can also do that and r3 is the callback uh, when we once we run this we get the violations right so if you want to do anything with those violations, then we have to write a callback function and then we can write our logic to work with those violations okay so let us copy this command and i just enter it in here so i just run my test case now okay so in here we are seeing 10 
plus 5, 15, 16, and 17. In here as well, in total, we have 17 issues, right? In here, you see the category, uh, the type of issue, right? So if you want to see more about this, you just click in here and open the developer's toolbar, go to the console, and in here, you would find under this nodes, you will find all the elements that are being impacted by this, okay? Uh, this is also telling about the description of the problem it uh, the description says that ensure the contrast between foreground and background colors meets this particular standard wcag all right now uh, if you click on this particular link it will take you to the page wherein you'll find more information about this particular problem and how you can fix this all right so let's look at the arguments now so this far we have been searching for the whole document now let's say i want to identify the vulnerabilities on the button element just on the button element so if i do this and run my test again so now you see we are getting just this one error okay so this way you can restrict it to any specific element all right so the next level is let me take a copy of this so this was for the document this one is for a specific element now there might be cases when you know that certain components on your web page are still under development right so you want to exclude them then how can you go about it so you just use this command okay and in here you pass in an object and in that object you say exclude like that and then this exclude except as you could see string of array right so you have to pass in array and in here let's say i want to exclude button this time okay and if i run this right so now you see that button thing is being gone okay so those they, earlier there were 10 errors right now there is only one because uh, this is uh, of type input okay input type is equal to submit so this is not a button tag element and you can also see that if i just do a right click inspect okay so it is of type input okay so the next one is if we have to uh, escape any rule so for that the first argument we have to set to null second one we have to pass in an object like this okay and then we have to say rules all right and in here we have to pass in an object again all right and which rule do you want to bypass so let us open this so and you can click on any of the uh, error in here and select the appropriate id okay so like i'm selecting this one okay so this one would be gone after i write this test case so in here you do it like this you say colon and you say enabled and you set it to false right like this so i run this and now we should not see that particular rule anymore all right so see it's gone from here now in here you see a lot of information right what if i just read all this information from here and log that to the console itself okay so i've already uh, created a custom command and i just get rid of all of these and i give it this test case the name custom command okay all right so the name of the command that i've created is this and let me just add this only in here so that only this test case gets executed so now if i save it all right and go back to the runner all right so do you see the difference all right so we have these little icons in here uh, and then you you have the the error category elements must have so this is basically the description right and these are the specific buttons so you can now over over these all right isn't that nice now let me just quickly uh, walk you through that command so 
I have used these emojis and for that I have added an extension this one right so you can add this extension in your visual studio code and then you can work with these right and I have written this callback function which is just you know reading all that information and this is how you are going to use it we are uh, reading everything from the uh, from the document right so it's applicable to the whole document then we are not escaping any rule we are just going by the default and then we are invoking this callback function right now let's do one thing let me quickly fix all these errors in my awesome page all right so let me do that quickly All right, so I have fixed now all the accessibility issues reported by Xcode. Now let me save this and rerun my test cases. Great. So now this is truly the amazing website. All right, great. So I hope uh, you you like this.